I mean, scientific fields are becoming so specialised and they're so varied. Are you really saying that you have more in common with, say, a paleontologist or someone in a branch of science very far removed from yours than you would with a playwright or a poet? Absolutely, especially if he's a good paleontologist. We talk to each other and we try to look at something from a new point of view and we delight each other in a new point of view. And when you're talking to somebody else who's trying to think of something new, different, our backgrounds give us a slightly different point of view. I mean, a scientific background. Like, I specialize in physics to say he specializes in paleontology. So he might know, for example, about other animals. He might have thought about whether other animals dream and what the signs are and all kinds of things that I hadn't thought of. I can't make it up now because I'm not the paleontologist. But I believe that, yes, I find always that a good man... Uh, I take it all back. I take it all back. A good man... I talk to good men in other fields. There's certain kinds of men in every field that I can talk to as well as I can talk to a good scientist. I met a historian, or a writer of history, from France once, and I had a marvelous conversation with him. Moirois, his name was Andre Moirois. And then I met an artist, Robert Irwin, who's a very important artist in Los Angeles in modern art and I could talk to him at the same depth of excitement so I take it all back if you give me the right man in any field I can talk to him I know what the condition is that he did whatever he did as far as he can go that he studied every aspect of it as far as he has stretched himself to the end he's not a dilettante in any way and so he talked deep as far as he can go, and he, therefore he's up against mysteries all the way around the edge. And awe. And we can talk about mystery and awe. That's what we have in common.